Hi guys. So this is our second sacral chakra practice. Um, so I done the light practice yesterday. This is um, progressing a little bit on from there. Um, so sacral chakra, svadhisthana, is about flexibility, creativity, and willingness to change. So these are all aspects that we're really calling on right now, especially I think the, the, the willingness to, to change. We're changing the ways in which we're living, working, communicating, exercising, socializing. Um, we're needing to be creative um, in the ways that we, we do that. Um, and this chapter is all about creativity as well. So I think this is, is really nice to, to tap into at the moment. It's also about being aware and connected and experiencing the world through our senses, which I, I think we're all eyes wide open at the moment and, and really experiencing um, the world. I, I ran a Svarasthana chakra class a couple of weeks ago um, before isolation <clears throat> and one of my students, hi Sam, um, said at the end that it felt really joyful. So I'm hoping that through the, the, the movement and the, the, the freedom, the creativity of this practice, you'll, you'll feel maybe a, a little bit of joy, which is um, maybe something we're finding difficult to connect to at the, the moment. So I just want to start by um, being still, centering around our, our breath, taking a long inhale and a long exhale and just connecting to the qualities of the, the first chakra, we've, we've already worked on this, Muladhara chakra, with the, um, the grounding and stability practices. So just as you exhale, letting the energy come down and into your roots, feel that you're, you're stabilizing, you're connecting to earth energy, releasing your tension, your stresses. So breathing all the way down and into the, the root and the base of the, the body. And then when you feel ready, just allowing the awareness to expand a little bit into the, the sacrum, into the, the lower belly, the seat of uh, the second chakra, Svarasthana. And this chakra is a, a water element and as such it governs the, the fluid systems of the, the body. And then when you feel ready, you can start to stir a little bit here. <laughs> so you start to mobilize a little bit the, the, the hips and the pelvis. Feel that you're, you're moving the weight around the sit bones. You're stirring and mobilizing. And the movement can be as small or as large as you like. It can be tiny or it can be bigger. You can move in one direction and then maybe change and move in the other direction. 
direction. The eyes are closed. And we'll start to feel that we're unlocking the energy here. Change again. So as the weight shifts, we connect to the, the hips, the pelvis, the lower back. More subtly, you feel the, the fluid center, the, the organ body as you, as you move. And we connect to the, the water element, the feeling of, um, of fluidity as we move. When it feels like enough, you can bring yourself back to the center and just take a breath or two here. And then you can bring your hands in front of your heart. Maybe for a moment, just contemplate your intention. An intention be for flexibility in our actions and our attitudes, for willingness to, to change, to adjust. You take as long as you need with your, your contemplation here, your intention. And we'll connect the head into the heart. As you exhale, we'll release the, the fingertips to the floor and again just put down your roots. Remember these feelings of um, stability that we cultivate in uh, our Muladhara practices are, are really vital at the moment. So just connecting down, exhaling. And then on your inhale, moving smoothly and fluidly, we take the arms out and all the way up. When we exhale, we bring the hands down into the center. And you can round the back a little bit here if you like, flex the spine, bring the chin in towards the chest. And then you inhale, interlace, press forward, open the chest, the shoulders, reach out, lengthen both sides of the waist, and then exhale wide and down and we'll just do that twice more so linking and movement with breath vinyasa inhaling up exhaling down inhaling forward and up and exhale wide and down Exhale down. Inhaling. And exhaling. And then Bringing yourself into a um, malasana pose, so this is a squat pose. If you have issues with your knees, you can support your squat. You can continue to uh, support with maybe a rock or two. Um, if it's okay for you to take the weight just in your feet, we come into malasana. And we just take a, a breath or two here. We, we feel into the, the hips. We shift the weight just a little bit side to side. So again, you're connecting down into foundation and you're feeling the way um, little changes in pressure in your feet are felt further 
up through the structure of the body into the hips, into the pelvis as you just move and, and mobilize a little bit. No right or wrong. So remember this practice is about creativity. So I don't want to limit that by, um, by making the instructions too precise. So it's, it's just movement. It's moving from the feet into the hips. You can come up onto your toes if you like. You can rock side to side, forward and back really sink and settle into your hips. You want to feel a bit of opening. Often, if we have um, issues uh, around Spadastana, if that energy is a little bit blocked, it's reflected as, as stiffness or limitation around hips and pelvis. So mobilize here a little bit. Take a few breaths. And then when you're ready, you can bring yourself slowly up. We're gonna come into Uttanasana. So you'll make an adjustment in your feet, bring them hip distance apart, and then just release down the head. Let the weight drop into the crown as if you're releasing the, the weight of your brain into the crown of your head. You're releasing the weight of your head, you feel the decompression in your neck, and you can move here again in a way that feels good, maybe shrug the shoulders, move the head from side to side, and then just little changes of, of pressure in the feet again. So the energy is felt all the way through the legs and into the hips and into the pelvis as you just shift the way you sway side to side. You can feel fluid movement through the spine. Long inhale. And long exhale. And maybe just one more of those. So you feel a little buoyant as you inhale. And then releasing. When we come up, it's from the feet. We feel the energy rise up through the legs. Very, very slowly restacking the spine, let the arms trail nice and loose and easy. And all the way up to standing. And then standing in your, your body for a moment again, just change that the pressure in the feet, feel it into your hips, into your pelvis. Take a breath. And then from the, <laughs> you might have to move there, little guy. Move your bum, Zach. Uh, from the front edge of your yoga mat. Go lay in the bed. From the front edge of your yoga mat, just take a, a breath or two here. So with the inhale, we take the arms out and up, really lengthen, you inhale. And then exhale, bring the hands down and in towards your heart. Inhale, press away and up. Exhale, wide and down, fold all the way forward. Inhale, let your heart lengthen. Exhale, travel back into downward facing dog. And again, just 
move the weight a little bit, shift through the feet, pedal the feet, move the hips, any movement again that feels um, good, that creates a, a feeling of uh, freedom, mobilizes your hips, you can open into your side waist, Head on your feet. Maybe take another breath. And then as you exhale, lower down. Now, take your knees as far back as you can. So you reach your heels back and you lower your knees just very, very slowly down to the floor. So when you land, you should be in a slightly long tabletop pose. And then we inhale, we open the heart, we bring the breastbone forward. And as we exhale, we draw the tail under. Now, as you draw your tail under, shift the pelvis forward a little bit. So you just feel opening in a slightly different way around the hips and pelvis. And then inhale and open your frontal space again, draw the heart forward. And then exhale and draw the tail under. And then inhale and open the frontal space. <laughs> and then exhale and draw the tail under. Good, now we're gonna come all the way down from here. You keep your tail tucking and you shift the weight forward. Now, you really need to pull your tail down and keep your chin tucked in as you come into Cobra. So you keep the lower back open. Come down slowly. Arrive in your Cobra. Make sure you're not forcing your back. And then exhale, lower the heart down. Inhale and Rise up and come into Cobra again. Exhale, slowly down, releasing. Inhale again, rise up. Exhale again, slowly down. Nice fluid movements through your spine. Let's do one more. Inhale, come up. tuck your toes, give the hips a little rock. So it's that nice kind of um, tidal movement that we were working with these movements last night in, the, in the, the first practice, just as if you're being washed a little side to side, releasing any pressure from your back, and then a little shift back and into child's pose. Move as smoothly as you can. So the movements are, are graceful, Nice long breath as you release into Velocina. One more breath. You can rock a little bit here if it feels good, just side to side nestling back, taking your hips back towards your heels. Big sighing breath. And then when you're ready, you bring yourself slowly back up and into downward facing dog. Nice smooth transition. Good. In this downward facing dog, I'm going to try and mobilise the pelvis a little bit more. So as you exhale, draw your tail under. So your posterior tilt your pelvis and look in towards your centre. So you're slightly flexing your spine. And then inhale and go the other way. So there's a little bit of extension here. You lift your sit bones, open your frontal space, lift the head a little bit, feel the extension in the spine. 
And then exhale, go the other way, tail under, look in towards your center. Inhale, heart forward, open your frontal space. Feel the energy here as you extend your spine. Exhale and under. And inhale and open. Lovely, and exhale, last time under. Wonderful. When you're ready, walk your feet forward and towards your hands. So you're coming into Uttanasana. You lift the heart, lengthen the spine, urd for Uttanasana. And then you exhale and you fold. You take a, a breath and again, just check for, for any tension, anything you can let go of, release. Maybe move the head a little bit, shrug the shoulders. Move the hips from side to side. When you're ready, we lift the heart. Uttanasana again, spine ripples forward. And we exhale, we take the right leg back. We're coming into lunge. So you reach your right leg back. You reach your heart forward, maybe square the left hip back a little bit. And you lower down. your right knee. Take a, a breath or two here. You might want to move the, the hips back and forward very slowly just to open up more space. We're not bouncing in our, in our joints but just slow, thoughtful movement. If it feels okay for you, you walk your left foot out to the side a little bit and turn the toes out so there's opening through your inner leg line and you sink into your hips here. And then you can stay here if this feels like enough. If this feels okay, you can take the left arm up. There's a little bit of extension in the spine here. You open your heart. Nice graceful movement. And for those that feel really open here, you maybe will bend that right leg and bring left hand to right ankle, just open up a tiny bit more. Lovely. You release from that heel toe, the left foot back in. Stand into your left foot and float your right foot forward. Lift your heart, lengthen out of Uttanasana. And exhale. Good. Inhale, lift the heart. And the other side. So the left leg steps back. And again, we feel our way into our, our lunge. You might want to sink up and down, lower the back knee when you're ready. Just explore the, the possibilities for opening up more space. If it feels okay, and all of these variations, you know, they're optional. You can stay in that first variation if you like. If it feels good for you to open the hip a little bit more, you turn the toes out. You might wanna, again, just tease out more space. Checking in with your, 
You're breathing, nice long exhales, just a reminder that we want to stay really connected to the, the roots, foundation of the posture, and then maybe open up. See how it feels more spacious. It's a long breath. That final variation, if it's okay for you, bends the back leg. Brings a bit more stretch into your hip flexors and quads on the left side. Releasing gently, bringing the foot in. And then standing into your right foot to flow your left foot forward. You lift the heart and lengthen. And exhale and fold. So here again, maybe sway the hips from side to side. Shrug the shoulders, release from the neck. Take a big inhale. You feel buoyant on the inhale. And release on your exhale. Good. We inhale, lift the heart, Urdhva Spine ripples forward. And then exhaling, plant the hands, move back into downward dog. Again, pedal the feet, try and find more movement around hips and pelvis, maybe into the sides of your waist. But you can, what you can open up here, where you can find more, more freedom. And then again, reaching the heels back, you lower the knees as far away from your wrists as you can. So you land in that really long tabletop pose again. The inhalation brings the heart forward, spinal extension, like a long, happy cow. The exhalation draws the tail under and the chin in, but we shift the pelvis forward a little bit. Feel opening your lower back and around your sacrum. Inhale and extend. Exhale, tail under. One more, inhale, extend. Exhale, tail under. Could you keep the tail drawn under the chin in? And you start to sink down towards cobra. Now don't dump your, your pelvis here, come down slowly, bend the elbows, keep the chin in, keep the lower back open. Really nice transition into a cobra pose. Exhale, lower down. And then inhale, rise up into cobra again. Really nice ripples through your spine coming down. Maybe twice more, coming up. Coming down. One more. Good. That little side to side. As if you're just washing the tension out of your, your lower back. Child's pose when you're ready. You could take your child's pose a little bit wider here rock into it. Long inhale. 
and a long exhale. You take as long as you need in your child's pose when you're ready, coming up. Smooth transition. Down the dog. In your dog now, um, be intuitive. If you need to, to stabilize, if you need to feel qualities of, of rooting and grounding, be still. Exhale down into the roots. If again you want to feel movement and, and grace and flow, pedal a little bit, rock the hips, move through the feet and the legs, extend, flex the spine, any movement that feels good, close your eyes and, and go with the flow. In your own time, you walk your feet forward towards the hands. Lift your heart, lengthen, breastbone moves forward. And exhale, release. Again, listen to what your body is asking you to do. You can shift the weight, you can move. You can feel that fluidity and grace or you can be still and connect again to that first chakra, to rooting, to grounding, stability. When you're very ready, we bend the knees a little and we roll up slowly. And tail drops down. Release into the, the feet. Take a breath. Hands come in front of the heart. You can refresh your intentions. With the inhale, you reach out and up. Exhale, down towards your heart. Inhale, forward and up. Exhale, wide and down and fold all the way into Uttanasana. Lift the heart, lengthen, spine ripples forward, inhale. And exhale the right leg back. Now, this is for Virabhadrasana B, warrior two. So you turn the right toes out a few degrees. Check the alignment here. Both feet, more or less on the midline of your yoga mat. Anchor down, so an exhalation here just brings you right into your roots. And then when you're ready, transition up and into warrior two. So you're turning your pelvis and your chest towards the long edge of your yoga mat. You're sinking down into both sit bones. Arms extend. Just take a breath or two here. Try and keep the, the breath elegant. And then we reverse the, the warrior. So the right hand reaches down the right leg, the left arm reaches up. You can soften the elbow a little bit, relax the wrist. And you breathe here, you're opening through your left side ribs. And then from here, see if you can pour into Palsvakanasana. Now, keep Palsvakanasana relatively easy. So forearm comes to thigh, belly is open, and the back arm reaches up and over. Take, again, a breath. Circle the 
arm forward, down and around to bring you up here. Inhalation brings you up, you straighten both legs, arms extend, parallel to the floor. And then as you exhale, you come back to where you began, back to your warrior two pose. And we're gonna move through those postures with the breath. So we inhale and reverse. Exhale, pull forward, pulse back and ask your back arm is graceful. You inhale, circle the arm around and let it carry you all the way up, front leg straightens. And then you exhale and you sink down. Again, inhale, reverse. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. You pivot onto the toes of your back foot, both hands come to the floor. You might need to adjust your back foot here so that you have really clear foundation. We're bringing ourselves straight into split dog if we can. Now, if you need to do this in two parts, it's fine. You can step your left foot back into dog and then extend the left leg up. If it feels okay for you to come from here, that left leg is back and up and the toes reach for the sky. Now you can take any variation of split dog that feels good. So if you want to open it up, you can, opening through your inner right leg line. And then we're gonna bring the left knee through and we're coming into a pigeon pose. So slowly try and place the outer edge of the left foot first and then open the hip as you lower down. Now, if you need a modification here, we worked on the, uh, the other variation of this pose last night in the first Falistana practice, the recline pigeon pose. So you could take that as a modification. Otherwise, we're here. Keep it high if you need to. If you feel um, that the, the hip is a little bit restricted, you can stay here. You don't have to sink all the way down. Be mindful of what you're feeling in your knee. We don't want to feel the stress here. You can keep a little bit of the weight in your hands to protect your knee. Dorsiflex this foot, that can help as well. If you feel that it's okay for you to move deeper, you slide back through your right leg. Now, I like to keep my right toes tucked under here because it helps me align that leg, but this is the other variation with the toes uh, pointed, so the foot's in plantar flexion. If you wanna keep your toes tucked under, you can. And you can keep this variation with your heart lifted Or you can take this variation where you lower down. So clear, smooth breathing down towards hips and pelvis. For one more breath. When it feels like enough, bring yourself up very slowly. Now, if you've chosen the supine version you could stay supine for this next posture as well. From here, we're gonna bring the right leg around and we're gonna cross the right leg over the left leg. You'll need to maybe lift and wiggle a little bit to get into this, but we're coming into uh, Gumakasana. So, yeah, a little wiggle into it. So if you're supine, it, it, it's that shoelace pose 
crossing one leg all the way over the other and hugging both legs in towards you. If you're seated, we'll just be with this for a moment or two. So we feel a, a, a bit of opening into the outer hips. Try and keep the breath steady, fluid. Releasing from here, coming into Baddha Kanasana. So the soles of the feet come together, the knees drop out to the side. You settle down and into your base, lift and open your heart. And then exhaling and coming forward. We'll take maybe one more breath here. Slowly up. We'll put the soles of the feet on the floor and bring the feet in as close as you can. See if you can get connection through your feet to the ground so you feel um, foundation and anchoring and then try and press into the feet to bring you up and into Malasana. If you need to use your hands to give you a push there, you can. So feeling this posture again, we felt this quite close to the beginning of the, the class. Just noticing now if we feel more space in the, in the hips. Kind of a wiggle and a rock. Um, sometimes it really helps just to, to close your eyes when we're when we're trying to feel a little deeper into the, the body, close your eyes and, and move. Dance with your, your breath a little bit. When you're ready, you can bring yourself up into Uttanasana. Remember to align your, your feet. So hip distance apart parallel. Lift the heart, length and breastbone forward. And then exhale, come forward. Ripple uh, the, the breastbone forward, lengthen the spine. And you're taking your left leg back to do the other side. So you're finding the, the foot pattern, the foundation for warrior two again. You take a big exhale and down into your feet. Really clear foundation. And then when you're ready, you press into your feet to bring you up and into that first warrior two. So any adjustments that you need to make through your feet and your legs, you go ahead, you drop down into both sit bones, try and feel that your spine is vertical, both arms extend, and the drishti, the gaze is out and over the front hand. Good. 
When you're ready, you reverse. So you open through your right side ribs. Remember, you don't have to have that arm completely straight. You can soften the elbow, relax the hand. When you're ready and on an exhale, you pour it into Parsvakanasana. So the forearm comes to the thigh. You open your belly space. The tail draws down towards the back heel. So you keep your lower back open. Take the arm up and over. When it feels okay, the arm comes forward, circles around, and feel that the breath and the arm together bring you back up, and you sink down again into your warrior two as you exhale. Good, so with the breath, inhale, reverse. Exhale. So try not to fragment at all here. Exhale. Inhale, reverse. Exhale, pull forward. Inhale. And exhale. One more, inhale. Nice, elegant movements coming out of a really firm foundation. Inhale. And exhale. Good. You pivot around onto the toes of the back foot. Both hands come to the floor. Make any adjustment that you need to make. And then if you can, you take the right leg straight up and back and into your split dog. Now you can keep this a, a neutral, a basic split dog, or if you want to spin open, you can. And then you thread through. You're coming into your pigeon pose. You take the outer edge of your right foot to the floor first and ease your way down into the posture. Nice and easy, and come into the pose. And again, maybe keep the, the back toes tucked under. Ease out into the posture. What we don't want to do here is, is let the heel fall out so that we let this back leg drop out of alignment. So maybe use the toes if you need to. I, I find that I need to. Use the toes to help you keep that alignment. You're opening into the front of your left hip, the outer right hip. Check in with the knee, make sure your knee's not feeling stress or vulnerable. You can lift the heart, take this version for a breath or two. Mm, fall forward when you feel ready. So again, you can certainly take the, the modifications here, the reclined versions that we worked with yesterday. One more breath. Bring yourself slowly up. If you're supine, you can just thread the leg a little further over. Otherwise, the left leg is coming all the way around 
and um, you'll need to wiggle just a little bit here to come into Gummel Costner. So you thread the left leg as far over as you can, lift and wiggle, drop down in between your heels. If you need support, you can bring blocks or block underneath your hips, your sit bones. So nice and tall. Let the exhalation drop you down into your pelvis. We tend to bring uh, tension here in the chest and the shoulders and the upper body, especially if it feels a bit intense in the hips. We tend to, to grip a little bit as if we're trying to lift ourselves out of the, the intensity, out of the pelvis. Try and soften into it. It's willing to, to let go and release into the, the posture. When you feel ready, Avada Konasana again. So coming out here, bringing the soles of your feet together. Rock to make yourself comfortable. Lift the heart and lengthen. And then slowly fall. So our second visit to this posture, it's certainly worth bringing the breastbone forward, trying to make more space before you think about moving down. Maybe repeat, open. So again, it's a, like a wave that moves through the body. You lift, open, lengthen, and then Release and drop down. Mm. When you're ready, come up. Bring the feet to the floor again. <laughs> Try and connect down and into the feet to bring yourself up and into Malasana. Use the hands if you need to. And again, just, just feeling how it is here. The way we drop into the hips, the way we feel um, more spacious, more energy. Close your eyes and take two or three breaths here. You can shift a little bit if you, you feel. That you can make more space that way. When you're ready, lower down onto your seat and again you can use the hands here if you need to. Straighten the legs out in front of you. And take yourself into forward fold. Widen the sit bones. Slide forward. Lift and release. 
and may we repeat. Lift. Ripples through the spine. And release. You can rock some if it feels good. Stay in the forward fold for another breath or two. And when you're ready, bring yourself up very slowly. Take yourself down to semi-supine. And take a moment or two here to observe how you feel in this section of your, your body, the, the seat of Svanastrana. So in your, your low belly, your your hips, your pelvis, sacrum. We feel the, the afterglow of this practice in the base of the body. Give the knees a, a rock side to side. Feel that you, you settle down into your, your sacrum as you rock your legs. Bring the soles of the feet together one more time. Drop the knees out to the side. And rock a little bit here as well. I always think these movements are really nice when we're connecting to water element. You know, just as if we're being kind of washed by the, the waves, you know, side side you feel uh, the, the, the subtle shift of your uh, fluid center as well as you move here it's nice if you can let your your head relax and roll a little bit with the, the pelvis settle down when you feel ready and just take a breath or two here. Try and breathe out through your back. Breathe into your front. And again, breathe out through your back. Without lifting your legs, so you're not engaging your, your quads or your hip flexors at all, you're just going to slide out one leg at a time, very slowly, and into Shavasana. Slide out. You might feel you need to give your legs a little shake or give your feet a little rock. Make any adjustments that you need to make here. And then here, and we simply feel the, the, the wave of the, the breath rising and expanding on the, the inhale and falling away and dropping on the exhale. 
and we center around this this rhythm we let go of our distractions our worries I'd like you to stay here for a little longer. For another, another breath or two at least, and know that you can stay here for as long as you as long as you like to, long after I've long after I've left if you need to. If you feel that you're ready to close, you can take a stretch, a deep breath, Gradually wake up your, your senses, expand your, your awareness. You can roll over onto one side and take a moment there. Bring yourself up to sit when you feel that you're ready. And we can just take a, a moment here. Again, notice how you feel. Any shift in your energy bring the hands in front of your heart make a commitment to take the, the intention away from the practice with you, so the, the willingness to, to change. And take a bow forward. Namaste. <laughs> so you're sleeping now, are you, Zaki?